Yeah, Rochelle, we are seeing that rally uh, gaining steam as we count down to the closing bell. Just an hour left to go in the trading week. As you said, stocks headed for the fourth straight week of gains. And take a look at where they are right now. The Dow is up 332 points. The S&P 500 up 57, by the way, headed for their longest win streak since November 2021. And then the Nasdaq, the biggest gainer on the day with those tech stocks rallying yet again, uh, up about 1.75%. Consumer sentiment certainly helping boost the markets today as we got that index this morning, rising to a three-month high. The University of Michigan's reading coming in at 55.1. That is a 7% monthly increase from last month's 51.5 reading. Let's bring in Ryan Dietrich. He's Carson Group Chief Market Strategist to break it all down for us. Uh, Ryan, you know, the consumer sentiment we got this morning kind of rounds out what has been a pretty positive week on the economic front. The data that we got on CPI, PPI, all kind of pointing to maybe the questions, I guess, whether in fact we've peaked maybe too early to say, but how are you looking at it all? Yeah, it's it's a nice change, isn't it? You know, you think about it this week, we had a lot of good news. We know that. I think it's pretty clear we were not in a recession. We don't think we're going into recession immediately. But what's encouraging to me is just look at, let's just talk about today's action, right? You got buyers coming in on Friday. Let's remember what we saw earlier this year on Friday. Everybody starts selling. You got some confidence here. I mean, that's a good thing, right? And get a little geeky on you, but there's a lot of market breadth. There's a lot of participation on this rally, right? Small caps are finally going higher. Technology is going higher. We've got nearly 90% of the stocks in the S&P 500 above their 50-day moving average. What in the world does that mean? Historically, that's pretty rare, guys. That's what you see off major market lows. It's extremely rare to go right back down to make new lows. You have that much breath. There's a lot we can talk about, but the message of the market here, not saying we don't know, has been very strong, but to see that much breath, that's a really good thing, probably for a continuation of this summer rally. Now, it's interesting because we saw Kathy Wood saying, look, the economy isn't that rosy. People are sort of overestimating the strength of the labor market, but most people are taking a different take. So in this sort of environment where people have had cash on the sidelines, what is the play here? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Kathy's got some good points. I mean, things aren't perfect, but we are making 3.3 million jobs this year, which again, probably means you're not in a recession. <laughs> The truth is, you know, what are we up? About 15, 16% off the lows on the S&P 500, right? I mean, we still like equities here. I mean, we still think there's a lot of opportunity with equities over bonds. I mean, bonds have had a rough year. Stocks have had a rough year. But overall, this is, uh, this trend still makes a lot of sense. I mean, I like to say, you know, we talk about fundamentals and earnings. Look at what the credit markets are telling us, right? The smartest guys in the room, credit spreads on, you know, high yield and some of these other areas have really come back in. If there is truly a monster under the bed the second half of this year or later this year, the credit spreads spreads and credit markets will probably be showing it. We're not seeing that. So with the strength that I just talked about, the broad strength with credit markets hanging in there with earnings, once again, coming in better than expected, that's kind of the game that is played. Yes, but still the reactions, what matters one more quick thing on this about reactions, right? We had the fed hike rates a couple weeks ago. Remember we had three straight 1% up days around that. Remember earlier this year, the fed would hike, we go up the first day and then face plant the second day. Again, the message that we're getting now is much different than earlier this year. And that's a really good thing. So, I mean, that begs the question, what we saw this week, is this just a bear market rally or is there a meaningful shift that's happening right now? We saw the Bank of America uh, report coming out today pointing to investors being net buyers pretty much across the board. Yeah, yeah, we think it's uh, more significant. We don't think this is just a bear market bounce. June 16th might have been the low. Remember, let's not forget, this is a midterm year, right? We had that early year March low in, in earlier this year. We said, you know, historically, midterm years don't bottom until later in the year. Now we got a really significant looking low with the participation. So sure, it, we're not out of the woods. We could pull back down. But is June 16th a low? At this point, we think there's a very, very uh, above average chance that it, it indeed was. But let's not forget, right, second half of August, September, historically, seasonally, potentially, Potentially a week period, but later in a midterm year, like we're getting into the fourth quarter, first quarter next year, some of the strongest periods of an entire four-year presidential cycle right around the corner, which is a good thing, I think, for people who've had a you know a rough year so far this year. So then, Ryan, how would you characterize where we are in the economic cycle, given that backdrop that this is a midterm year? Yeah, similar to that word mid, mid-cycle slowdown. We don't see a recession, right? I mean, you hate to say, what year is it like? Well, 1994, economy slowed down. 
Fed was very aggressive. Rough year for stocks, very rough year for bonds. Sound kind of familiar here. You know, more of a mid-cycle slowdown. And again, the stock market leads, right? We've seen that. The stock market's weak on the way down. Then the economy weakens. Now the stock market's been strengthening. And some of the economic data is not perfect. We think maybe the stock market said, hey, by the second half, of, by the end of this year, the economy's probably going to come back, come back in. And again, a mid-cycle slowdown means, again, when we had that 24% bear market earlier this year, that probably was a, a major buying opportunity. And that's about we're non-recessionary bear markets bottom, right at 24%, exactly what we did this year again. Kind of interesting how history repeats itself. Uh, Ryan, what does this mean from uh, your strategy standpoint? I mean, are, are you starting to shift up some things, rotate some things out of your portfolio and, and moving back maybe some of the higher growth names that um, you could have stayed away from over the last few months? Yeah, you know, we're we're overweight equities here relative to uh, fixed income. We're having some internal discussions on our team. We're still kind of neutral as it pertains to tech and growth. We still have a slight um, preference to value here with higher yields and a little bit higher inflation. Um, but again, I think the key concept is, again, this is a big bounce off the lows. It's probably not it, right? There's probably some more coming uh, when, when you look at kind of just overall negative. There's still a lot of negativity out there. People are more optimistic than they were. So from that sentiment point of view, there can still be some upward bias. And again, with the Fed becoming a little bit more dovish, inflation coming in, all the things you guys have been talking about uh, you know, for days now, those things are still there. And just, just be aware that there could still be some upside uh, to, to equities here the rest of this year. So Ryan, what do you think is perhaps not accurately pricing it at the moment? Oh, well, you know, the, the, the geopolitical concerns potentially, right? I mean, you know, the, the issues with China that are still there. We've still got the issues in Europe uh, that are clearly still there. So those are some of the things that maybe aren't priced in that you, you'd say, you know, it's not making it to say, let's get out of stocks here. But it is saying, let's let's be realistic that there are still some of those worries. And again, we've only had one, well, I guess two, right? The CPI and the PPI. So we've had one good month of, of inflation coming back down. We want to see a couple months, obviously, of that to show more of a trend. But again, we're pretty optimistic that you know, we've had uh, peak inflation and likely it's uh, kind of coming back now at this point. And Ryan, when you look at your portfolio broadly, I mean, are, are you still overweight U.S.? Are you seeing any opportunities outside? What does that look like? Yeah, we'd still be overweight the U.S. here. Uh, developed international, specifically Europe, we're kind of, you know, maybe a little bit underweight. Emerging markets around that area also. I mean, honestly, a lot of the growth in the in the world is still coming from the U.S. And I know we just had two negative GDP prints. I'm, I'm understanding that. But we're seeing a lot of earnings growth and really a lot of potential. So we'd still stick with the U.S. here. Um, and we are in the models uh, that we run. All right. Great having your insights today. Ryan Dietrich, thank you for joining us this afternoon.